let's chat about Gemini. Not the star sign, we're talking about Google's AI model. There's been plenty of hype around Google with recent updates, specifically with the release of Gemini 2.5 Pro. So we've been testing it and let's have a look at how it can help you. Hi there, I'm Alex Knowles from automationhelpers.com and we help companies like yours get set up and automated using industry leading portals, apps and integrations. Gemini 2.5 Pro is really good. Nothing revolutionary, but it will help you save time with some critical tasks. So we're going to take a look at what this release means, how it compares to the competitors, and we'll also run through some real world examples so you can see how Gemini can be used in your current workflows. Now, for those of you that heavily rely on another model like ChatGPT, Claude, Perplexity, DeepSeek, R1, whatever it is, here's another contender. So make sure you keep watching. And without further ado, Gemini 2.5 Pro Experimental. Now you can access this directly within Google AI Studio, but it isn't yet accessible within your Google Workspace. Think when you're using Google Sheets, presentations, Google Docs, uh, searching your Google Drive, et cetera, you're still relying on an earlier Gemini model. But let's take a look at the marketing material. Now, like with every single model that was released recently, the stance here is that it is the best model for coding and complex prompts. However, when we see in scoring, that isn't exactly the case. Now, as we scroll down here, we'll notice the focus of performance is on enhanced reasoning, advanced coding, we'll see that soon, multimodal and long context. Previously, the Gemini models really struggled with producing a longer response. Let's say you were asking your AI model to generate a brief, a blog post, a proposal. Well, it really struggled giving you words that were quality of anything over 100. That's 100 words, I mean. So this improvement has really changed that, but does it compete with the others like ChatGPT and Claude? We'll find out soon. As we scroll down further, we'll notice the benchmark scoring. Now, as we can see, it has trumped the competition in reasoning and knowledge. This may be a biased scoring system though. We'll notice science, it's up there with the likes of 3.7 Sonnet from Claude, which was released earlier this year. We've got mathematics, it's sitting up there with the rest of them. However, Grok is killing the competition here on 93.3. Mathematics again, similar. Code generation. Here we can see it's got a 70% score where ChatGPT 74, they actually haven't used Claude 3.7 Sonnet score and Grok is also beating it. Now it could be that Claude 3.7 Sonnet hasn't undergone that testing. However, I will say that I believe 3.7 Sonnet's coding capabilities are right up there with the best of the best, particularly in both generation and in troubleshooting code. However, they've decided not to use a ranking system that Claude 3.7 Sonnet has been ranked on, or I'm not sure. So I like to take a look at OpenLM AI because it's crowdsourced. That means it's community led by people like you and me testing these models. What we will take a look at here is that we can see Google's Gemini 2.5 Pro is doing exceptionally well straight out of the gate. Again, it is an experimental version. And so we expect to see a full version soon. Here we can see that it's beating ChatGPT, the likes of Claude 3.7 Sonnet, DeepSeek, and other models at a lot of things, both in coding, vision, and reasoning. Now let's continue on and look at how Google is actually talking about this new model. Now, they're stating that it is the most intelligent model they have produced, 2.5. We've currently got 2.5 Pro Experimental, so we're expecting to see a 2.5 Pro or another similar model in the next coming months. Now, as we scroll down, we'll notice the same three things are talked about, that Gemini 2.5 Pro offers enhanced reasoning capabilities, improvements from what it used to offer with Gemini 2.0. It also has proficiency in coding, which we will test soon to actually see how well it performs. And it has multimodal capabilities. So now it's producing things that aren't just text, we're talking media, video, images, and of course, code. Now, rather than talking about Gemini 2.5 Pro, let's actually look at it in action. So we are going to access Gemini 2.5 Pro through the Google AI Studio. You can also access this through the API. 
Of course, though, that is going to cost you some dollars. We have access to it free through the AI chat. So we can see here that it looks somewhat more complex to what we are used to with Claude, with ChatGPT. We're able to select the model here on the right-hand side using 2.5 Pro Experimental. We can see the release date there. We'll also notice here that we have some suggestions, trip ideas, math tutor, solve geometry. Let's just quickly prompt it. Can you generate an HTML email signature for Bob Taylor? Just a random name. So we'll run that and see how quickly we get a response and what quality the response is. So we're thinking and still thinking seven seconds. Now, what I'll actually do is I'll open ChatGPT and we'll prompt it the same simple prompt. So we're still firing on that response. We're about at a minute, well, 43 seconds, some off. So 43.8 seconds and we got our response. I'm not going to actually use this HTML, but I have tested this in the past and it will work. If we just quickly take a look at ChatGPT, this was a matter of 20 or 30 seconds, and we've got a much simpler HTML file or HTML design there. So here I'm just gonna quickly run the ChatGPT generated, whoops. So here I'm just gonna quickly run the ChatGPT generated HTML email signature. And here we can notice it's simple. We're able to find those particular values within the HTML pretty easily. Let's have a look at the Gemini 2.5 Pro generated HTML file. So we've replaced the ChatGPT generated HTML with the Gemini 2.5 Pro. And here we can see it's a bit more complex. There's a lot more going on, which doesn't mean it's incorrect. It just means it's a lot harder for the person to come in and make changes after it was generated. We will notice here though, we have hyperlinks generated directly without prompting it to do so, which is definitely a win. Now that doesn't really prove anything, let's be honest. So what we're going to do is we're going to provide a CSV file of our client customer details to both ChatGPT, Gemini 2.5 Pro, Claude 3.7 Sonnet and Perplexity and see what results we get when we ask for a client portal. So I've opened up a new chat with Gemini 2.5 Pro, ChatGPT's O3 Mini, Perplexity, and Claude's 3.7 Sonnet. I'm prompting them each the same that I want you to generate a modern and user-friendly client portal that displays the most important info front and center. The portal should be designed for ease of use, giving clients immediate access to what they care about most, prioritize simplicity and visual hierarchy. Then I'm gonna upload the CSV file and now with that file uploaded, I've run the prompt on ChatGPT, Perplexity, and Claude. But we'll also notice in the right here that we can enable a code execution, function calling, structured output, change the way that Gemini 2.5 Pro should think about and reason with our prompt. So we're going to enable code execution and then run this. I haven't needed to do this on the other models. So let's see the response that we get. Our first response was from ChatGPT, which gave us this code. So let's copy it and take a look at what we were given. So ChatGPT gave us this super simple HTML code, giving us the active projects, outstanding invoices, new messages, and recent activity, but not a lot to go on from here. Yes, it took the data and provided some things, but eh, I'm gonna say that's a fail. Next up, if we look at perplexity, well, it's just giving us a plan on how we can build that client portal. So while it does give us some really great actionable steps, it doesn't do anything else for us. Then if we take a look at what we received from Gemini 2.4, well, to be honest, I feel like it got confused by the prompt. Here, it's kind of giving us a step-by-step -step guide on how to build a client portal, but, but none of this is going to actually help someone that doesn't understand how to do it. It's chopped up information. It definitely tells you how to do certain things, but really, I'm gonna say this doesn't help. Then if we take a look at Claude's 3.7 Sonnet, we can see it has created a beautiful client portal, and that's why I love this model. We're able to navigate and interact with the client portal, see each individual client. There we can see our project start date, end date, duration, budget, deliverables, man. What it has produced is pretty damn exceptional. And 
comparing this to what we received from the other models, well, I think we have a clear winner. But just because it didn't perform well in generating a client portal from a simple prompt, that doesn't mean it's not a good model. I could have sat there and given it more prompts, helped it understand what I was asking from it, and we would have got somewhere better. But in saying that, that shows that the coding and complex capabilities of Gemini 2.5 Pro is lacking to that of Claude 3.7 Sonnet. However, when we chat about reasoning and knowledge as well as mathematics and science, it looks like Gemini 2.5 Pro actually trumps Claude 3.7 Sonnet. I also tested Gemini 2.5 Pro to see how well it could troubleshoot coding. And again, the other models beat it at that. Now, when and why would you want to use Gemini 2.5 Pro in your workflows? Well, perhaps you prefer Google as a platform. I wouldn't say that the reasoning and knowledge of Gemini 2.5 Pro is miles ahead of any of the other models out there. And if you're already heavily relying on a particular model, well, it's best to stay with that model. In saying that though, if Google do give access to Gemini 2.5 Pro in our Google workspace, think summarizing docs, generating project briefs, presentations, emails, meeting notes. I won't have to pay for Fireflies or Fathom to take notes in my Google Meets meeting. If they decide to release this, well, then I might move over and begin using Gemini 2.5 Pro. Now, something to consider when looking at which AI model you want to use is pricing. How much money is it going to cost, particularly when you're using it as a developer? Here we can see that Google is yet to release the pricing for Gemini 2.5 Pro. However, they do have Gemini 2.0 on a free tier. So I imagine that while it's in the experimental stage, it's not going to cost too much. Well, I hope that was a helpful video. If it was, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this a thumbs up. If you want to learn more about how you can implement AI in your business or you're looking to automate parts of it, then don't hesitate to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com. Our team of experts are offering a free 30-minute consultation, so book yours today.